Hi, this is Tom Pizzotto from SpyMovieNavigator.com. I just did something that I hadn't done since last September. I went to a movie theater here in the U.S. What brought me to the theater for the first time since Tenet? Well, it was the spy movie that just released here in the U.S., The Courier. So join me as I take a quick fire look at the 2021 movie, The Courier. I will try to keep the spoilers to a minimum here, as I'm aware that this movie has a staggered release schedule and isn't being released in the U.K. until mid-May. France and Turkey won't get it until sometime in mid-June. I assume it'll stream sometime after that. One of the things that we at Spy Movie Navigator do when examining movies is to look for influences for a movie, either in real-life events or how one movie might influence another. For instance, the vault scene in the 1996 movie Mission Impossible was heavily influenced by both a scene in the 1964 movie Topkapi as well as the second episode called The System of the 1988 reboot of the Mission Impossible TV show. Since The Courier is based on real-world events, it's right in our wheelhouse. So let's go ahead and dive in. The Courier debuted at the 2020 Sundance Festival just before the pandemic hit. At the time, it went by the name Ironbark, which was the code name for the main Russian character of the story, Oleg Penkovsky. He's played wonderfully by Mirab Neninzi. Benedict Cumberbatch gives yet another stellar performance in the role of the British main character, Greville Wynne. Many spy fans already know the basics of the true story of Gravel Wynn and Oleg Penkovsky, so I'm comfortable relating some of the facts behind this movie without hitting on spoilers. I will refrain from exposing the movie's twists and main tension points so that you can keep listening and still enjoy the movie when you see it. So the basic story is that a traveling salesman with no military, no government, no intelligence background at all, was enticed by MI6 to act as a go-between for MI6 and a Russian spy named Oleg Penkovsky. Penkovsky passed information to the West, often through Wynn. Penkovsky loved Russia, but not the Soviet Union, and he really didn't trust Khrushchev. He was a well-decorated lieutenant colonel in the GRU, which was the Soviet Union's foreign intelligence agency. That's why he had access to such detailed information that he passed on. The information that Penkovsky passed through Wynn would play a major role in the U.S. response to the Cuban Missile Crisis of 1962 between the U.S. and Soviet Union. In case you aren't familiar with the Cuban Missile Crisis, let me give you a very short recap. The U.S. deployed ballistic missiles in Turkey and Italy. In response, the Soviet Union built the infrastructure in Cuba, which is only 90 miles from Florida in the U.S., to launch ballistic missiles. A war of words between the U.S. President John F. Kennedy who ordered a blockade of ships going to Cuba, and Soviet First Secretary Nikita Khrushchev, finally ended with the Soviets dismantling the Cuban-based missiles. There's more to it, but that gives you the high level. The event is considered to be the closest the two countries have ever gotten to full-scale nuclear war, and the information from Penkovsky alerted the U.S. to the Soviet buildup in Cuba. This really happened. It wasn't something that screenwriter Tom O'Connell made up. It was a real-world thing. So that's as much of the plot as I want to give away. So let's talk about the non-spoiler stuff in The Courier. This is a spy movie in part. It has the intrigue and tension of spy stuff. There are brush passes, dead drops, and other stealthy activities. It also has the KGB monitoring people. Key ladies in the tourist hotels monitoring everything that goes on, which was a reality in the Soviet Union for travelers. People being captured getting hoods placed over their heads. People shot or poisoned. There are even a few gadgets, like a mini camera. James Bond uses almost an identical camera in Moonraker in 1979. One gadget that I really liked was a hidden drawer within a drawer in Penkovsky's desk. I thought that was really cool. So in short, this is a spy movie. There's danger throughout all the movie, especially that the principals could get caught, which any spy movie needs. Now, The Courier is not an action movie a la James Bond or Mission Impossible and Bourne. This isn't an action thriller. There are no high-end stunts or long, crazy car chases in this movie. Rather think of it closer to something like the 2000 movie Breach, which was about Robert Hansen, or maybe Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. Both of those movies were good spy movies without a lot of action, just intrigue and suspense. Earlier I said this was a spy movie in part. Now, I saw this movie with my lovely wife, and as we were driving home, she said, that really wasn't a spy movie. It was a movie about friendship and loyalty. And I think that's an excellent way to look at this movie. Yes, this was about a real-life espionage, but the root of the movie was the unlikely and deep real friendship of the two main characters. These two guys who were thrown together by fate ended up spending a lot of time together. 
They went out on the town often, and they even met each other's wife and child. It would have been very unusual for a foreigner to meet a Soviet diplomat's spouse and child during the Cold War. I think that strengthens the depiction of the bond between them. We also have to remember that these two could talk with each other about what they were doing, but they couldn't mention it to anyone else, not even their wives. They needed to trust each other. At one point in the movie, Penkovsky is asked by Wynne's young son why the Soviets hate the British. Penkovsky's response nails the movie. He says that it's the politicians who hate the other politicians. The people don't hate the other people. That explains the relationship very well. Now, the two leads, Mirab Nininzi and Benedict Cumberbatch, were excellent. Nininzi was nominated for a 2020 British Independent Film Award for Best Supporting Actor for this performance. I was actually a little surprised that Cumberbatch wasn't up for the Best Actor nomination there, especially in the last quarter of this film. Again, we're not going to give you the spoilers there, but he was amazing. And he lost 20 pounds to film the end of this movie. I'd love to know what he did. I have read that he said it was horrible. The supporting roles were very well acted as well. Rachel Brosnahan as Emily Donovan represented the CIA, along with Angus Wright, who was playing Dickie Franks from MI6. They were very good in their roles. Now, Dickie Franks was a real guy. Emily wasn't, and we'll talk about that more in just a minute. Jesse Buckley turned in a very strong performance as Wynne's wife, who was kept in the dark about what her husband was doing. I also thought that whoever cast Keir Hills as Wynne's young son deserves a mention. This young man really looks like he could be Cumberbatch's son, and he performed his role very well. One other person I'd like to call out is on the crew, and that's Keith Madden. He was the costume designer. Both my wife and I commented on how good the costuming was in this movie. It was very well done. Now, unfortunately, the wigs on the women were just, they were hideous. I mean, they were just awful. So it was unfortunate because the costuming was really good. Just the wigs weren't. Okay, so the story behind this movie is true. Some fact-bending does occur in the movie here, though. And normally that drives me nuts when you're doing a real-world thing and you change things a little bit. But it seems to work here. Part of this is because this is a movie about their relationship. The last quarter of the movie goes in and out between what really happened and fiction. Namely, a very pivotal scene has a conversation between Penkovsky and Wynne. In real life, the conversation never happened. However, it was a very nice way to bring home the relationship between these two guys. They really cared about each other, and this scene showed it. I don't want to give more away here, so you'll know the scene that I'm talking about when you see it. Also in this last part of the movie, Wynne has some tough things to deal with. This is where Cumberbatch's acting really soared for me. Again, I don't want to give it away, but you will be impressed when you see it. And a large part of it was true to what Wynne really experienced in real life. As is common in movies about real-world events, characters are often amalgamations of several people. This is true here, especially with the role of the CIA contact, Emily Donovan. She didn't exist in real life, but according to the movie's director, Dominic Cook, she represented many real-life people, most notably Janet Chisholm. She was the wife of a British officer who also passed information to the West from Penkovsky. So that's about all I want to give away in this quick-fire look at The Courier. I think any movie fan will like this one, especially if they're not expecting an action movie. However, one more thing that fascinated me comes in the first part of the movie. We see two tourists in Russia stopped by a man, and they're asked to deliver something. This was right out of the blue for them. They weren't spies. They didn't know who was asking or why they were being asked. They were told it was very important. What would you do in that situation? Imagine. It's the Cold War and you're a tourist in the Soviet Union. Someone hands you an envelope and asks you to deliver it for them. What would you do? A little bit later in the movie, Greville Wynne meets Dickie Franks for lunch. He's met Franks only once before. Wynne is a traveling salesman. He's not a spy. He's just a regular guy. While at this lunch, he's asked to become a courier, and he finds out that this person works for MI6. He's told that because he's just a salesman, no one would be watching. Oh, and you can't tell your spouse. What would you do in this situation? This one's a little bit different than the first one because it's for queen and country. In the first case, it was just two tourists being asked to deliver something. Here, he's being told this is for queen and country. To me, these are two of the most thought-provoking scenes from the movie. Here, please deliver this for me, 
or your country needs you. We need you to perform espionage. So I'll leave you with one question. What would you do if you were placed in this situation? How would you, not the people in the movie, not the people from the real world scenario, but you, the person listening to this podcast, deal with those two situations, especially during the Cold War? Fascinating stuff. And I think that's actually a key to this movie, is what would you do if you were put in that spot? So I'm glad I got to go back to the theater again to see another spy movie. I really enjoyed it. This has been Tom Pizzotto from SpyMovieNavigator.com. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can subscribe to our show, Cracking the Code of Spy Movies, right now on your favorite podcast app. And you'll find us on YouTube as well. Thanks for listening.